Hi, right, welcome back to the shop. So I've got two M1163 growlers. They both came from the same customer and they uh, shipped them down here from Utah. They gave us kind of a list of what um, they knew what was wrong with them. And then we also went through and fixed up whatever else we saw. Uh, one thing that was kind of a pain with these, one of them is PM78 and PM, the other one's PM87. And then if you look at the numbers on the hood, the registration number, that one ends in 676. This one ends in 667. And we just kept getting these things mixed up in our head. Every time we'd go to work on one, it's like, which one was it? You know, we just couldn't uh, keep them straight. It was funny. But anyways, we'll start with uh, PM78. Yes, this is PM78. Um, I got to kind of cheat here with my notepad again. Just got a lot of different things going on with these. So with this one here, you know, we obviously we did the engine oil, engine oil filter. Uh, we did have a problem with the drain plug on this one. The drain plug was frozen in there. When we finally got it out, it stripped the threads. So we had to retap it and put a different type of uh, drain plug in it. Um, we changed the hydraulic filter, we changed the transfer case oil, we changed the differential oil front and rear, um, changed the fuel filter. Uh, this one here had a problem with the fuel selection um, on the tanks. So the fuel selector valve that's down here on the driver's side, the one that's real fun to get to, we ended up changing that. It was actually just frozen up, probably from some moisture or something in the past. Both of these exhibited uh, transmission shifting issues. Um, they were just were shifting sluggish, shifting a little funny, and so we didn't change the oil in them, but we just added some seal conditioner. Uh, hopefully the seal conditioner will get in there and re revitalize them. You know, if these things sat for five years plus or whatever, um, we'll see what happens. If that doesn't help, they're just going to, you know, need to have the, the transmissions rebuilt. There's not nothing that we can really do for them other than that. This one here had the radiator fan wasn't working. That's one thing the customer he relayed to us. Um, it was just unplugged down here, down below here. You just see the, the plugs were just hanging down there so we plugged those back in tested them they all worked uh the the idle on this was really funny it would start up it would idle a little bit high and then um it would just start to increase and increase and increase and i, I kind of determined what it was and what it was was you know if you started you, know, you take the charge out of the batteries so the alternator's got a load on it and so that was holding the idle down a little bit for some reason somebody set the idle up too high and so what would happen is this alternator was slowly not working as hard to charge batteries it would just that would go up so we set the idle on both of these and that cured that problem uh, we also put a vent a differential vent cap on that side um, it had the old plastic one and it was broken coming around to the sides this one didn't have the marker setting uh, or the height setting markers on it so we added those and we set the height uh, going into the cab uh, you know, we added a key switch, something that we do to almost every one of these. Very few people don't have us do that. So we added that uh, the key lockout switch. And then this one here had a really bad leak on the suspension. The right front suspension kept dropping down. And we were chasing leaks, chasing leaks. Actually, back here where all the valves are in the height control valve, we changed a bunch of fittings in there. We changed a bunch of hose. It, it, it had a lot of small leaks in there. And then we also found the line that goes from the valves over here. They go down through here and into the tunnel. And right down in here, uh, it looked like a mouse or something had been in there and chewing on the line. And that was where the main leak was for that. Uh, we spliced that and that fixed that issue. So we're able to set the height. The height stays up good now. Uh, we did end up putting new check valves in that one as well. Um, and now she, she'll hold height all day. She'll hold it for days, actually. I also did the headlight uh, adjuster screw update on this one. Uh, with these kits that I've put together to redo those. So this one, the plastic things were all broken out. The headlights were pointing up this way and that way. So I, I installed the new kit. That way these things will probably last forever. Shouldn't be any more problems with those. It's all stainless steel, so it shouldn't rust. And uh, it also makes it easy to adjust your headlights as well. And then we also changed all four airbags. I'm going to show you the rear one here. Um, they were just rotted out really bad on this one. So I uh, replaced all four of them. So here are the airbags that came off of this one, off of uh, PM78. This one here is just rotted all the way into the cords. Uh, we actually had to cut it, uh, the end off of it, to get it apart, to get it out. Uh, you can see this one here, it's just, it's just chipped up, just rotted out. So that's why, um, unless they're in really good shape, we change them pretty much routinely. These ones, this one here is cracked up pretty good. Um, this one, you know, they're still holding air, but who knows for how long. So back here, as we pulled some of the tin work off to work in here, um, a bunch of these rib nuts stripped out. So we ended up replacing the rib nuts there. Um, they obviously saw salt, saw salt water and it did, took its toll on it. 
Uh, coming down to the rear steer, uh, we ground off the welds for the rear steer locks to put it back to how General Dynamics and Engineer used to be. Um, we have the lockout pins, so we can put the lockout pins in there. Um, the customer can keep those in whenever he doesn't want to actively use the rear steer. Um, right rear lower ball joint on this one was jacked up bad. Um, it ended up, we ended up almost destroying it to get it out, so we had to replace that. Uh, the upper ball joints, they were all in good shape. Uh, three of the boots we had to replace, um, they were just rotted out like usual. Um, we also did all the CV boots on it. We kind of come around to the front. So we did all eight CV boots. And then on the front, we always change the circ clips where the axle goes into the differential. Um, the rear, we don't have a problem with. We're able to just uh, grease them, reuse them. But the front ones, we always uh, change those now. So coming, coming back here to the batteries, uh, with these Optimas in here, the way they sit in here on a 63, uh, we had to make a new jumper cable between the two because of how far the battery posts are in, how far they sit apart from each other. And uh, we did some other repair on the battery cables here. We shortened everything, um, replaced this one, and we made everything fit in here real nice. Made some new hold downs and uh, got the batteries all taken care of. On this one here, the rear air tank drain was okay, uh, but we put a new cable on it and we, put, we set it up to where you can just get to it real easy. Uh, normally they're just kind of way deep in there and they're hard to get to. Um, we also added the tank drain here to, this, to the frame air tank, so you can just come back here and pull the cable and get the moisture out of that one. Uh, we also had to change this piece of uh, vent hose here for the right side fuel tank. The hose was bad, so we just had to put a new piece of hose there. On this 63, he has both doors. He, he had a top on it, but the top got shredded when it was uh, being shipped here. And uh, so the top's kind of no good, but I'm sure he's gonna buy a new one. Uh, but then he also was missing this, this bar here for the rear part of the top. And so we made up a new bar. So he's got a complete set of bars up there now. All right, now moving on to 87. Um, start under the hood here. Did the engine oil, engine oil filter. Uh, we did the hydraulic filter. This one here, we added the trans conditioner to this one also. It's not gonna hurt. Um, hopefully it helps. Um, it, this one shifts all right, but it's just a little sluggish. Hopefully it'll clean up just, you know, when you start to using it. Uh, put a new fuel filter on it. Change the transfer case oil. We also drained the differential oil on this one, front and rear. Uh, you know, we changed the oil. And this one did have water in the oil. So it's, that's why we check them now because, you know, we don't find it in all of them, but in quite a few of them we found oil, uh, water in the oil. So we cleaned that out and put new oil in it. Um, this one here had a CTIS system leak, a real bad one, meaning, you know, the, the central tire inflation system. So this left front hub right here was bad. The seal was blown out on it and the air was leaking right through the hub. So we replaced the hub. Um, that fixed a major leak on it. And it come around here to the right rear inside where the hub bolts on or the hub to the spindle uh the, there's an o-ring in there and that o-ring had been pinched when they assembled it last time and that was leaking air there also so we fixed both of those and we got the cti system working good now it holds air um that's all you know working correctly now we changed all four airbags on this one as well these ones were rotted out pretty good so it was uh, time to change them um, the left front, the owner was complaining that there was kind of a ticking noise or clicking noise from the front. And so he asked us to check the CV out. He had already put new CV boots on it, um, but we took it apart. And when we took it apart, we found we didn't find anything wrong in the, in the CVs. Uh, so we put them back together. We had to put new boots because the new boots were already starting to show some cracking, which um, I noticed that on my growler. My boots are just a year old and they were already starting to crack a little bit. And I think, you know, when I got them, the boxes were kind of old when I did mine. And... Uh, I think it was like old stock. I've bought so many from Napa now that I'm getting brand new boxes. The boxes have actually changed a little bit. And uh, so we're getting some real fresh CV boots now. I'm um, coming down to this left front wheel. Um, you can kind of see the, how dark the rubber is on here. Uh, it had a leak at the um, the brake caliper. It was just the, uh, the bleeders. I think two of the bleeders were leaking. So we changed those out and fixed that problem. All right, coming back here to the rear. Uh, same thing with the other growler, uh, has the same type of batteries. So we had to make a new jumper cable. And uh, I believe he did, uh, Royce did a little bit of work on the regular cables as well, but we had to redo that stuff. Made new hold downs for them. Uh, some new J hooks and everything. So these batteries are set up, set up how they should be now. 
and then this one here you can see inside there i don't know if the camera will pick that up um, we had to change the air tank drain on this one so we put a new cable right there for it and then we also added the uh, air tank drain here for the frame tank and put the cable right there where you can get to it uh going inside uh, we added a key switch to this one as well and then one other thing we had to do is this top rail that holds the top on um, it was bent up really bad so uh, we straightened that out we got it so so that the uh, bead on the front of the, of the canvas can slide in there it's got a new canvas on this uh, looks really good and now it slides in there and it's going to hold on a lot better here you can see one of the airbags that we took off i think this was the left front one for some reason they always seem to get the same wear pattern on them and they, kind of the same cracking which is surprising to me because i would think it'd be the right front because of the exhaust being down there but i don't know what it is but it's the left front ones are almost always like this all right uh so that's it with these two growlers it's kind of different putting two of them in one video but they came from the same place and they're going back to the same place and they're kind of like twin trucks almost so anyways thanks for watching please hit that like button and if you haven't subscribed already please do and as always thank you for watching